I'm just like, let let what is manageable be simple or like uh, my personal life be simple and let, you know, yeah. the chaos of working in this industry be the chaos in my life. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. Save I'm totally. it for the, Sorry. Save it for the episode. Yeah. Save it for the episode. I'm doing the banter. We can, we, <laughs> <laughs> we can gossip about Huberman, who is who got who's who, like, do you guys know the Huberman podcast, which is like no. what got me into sleep hygiene? Okay. And then no. his personal life blew up like a day ago. <laughs> oh, oh no. no. Oh no. Like in a bad way? Yeah, in a really bad oh, way. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no! Wait, who was it? Uh, what is his first name? Does anybody in in this know? And I think it's Andrew Huberman. Oh no! Uh, he was caught. He was this like Stanford doctor who has this super popular um, like medicine podcast, health podcast, uh, and then. This article came out and I read it, uh, which is terrible. I actually feel guilty. But it was basically like he was like dating like seven women at, at, at the same time oh. and like lying to all of them. It just seemed like a nightmare logistically. <laughs> what this man was doing? I, Wait, I was that, like, that must have been so hard to deal with. This is going to sound awful, but like, is that the worst of it? That's totally the worst of it. Yeah. Oh, I was were like, they, were I don't they all care. adults? Like, oh, yeah. Everybody's adult. Whew. I was like, fine with it. When yeah. you get to that, isn't it so fucked up that nowadays it's like, oh, that's it? Okay. It's kind of like, <laughs> okay, oh, well. they're just. Just like cheating on people. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I have like a French person sentiment with that stuff too. I'm like, well, if it was in, if it doesn't like a directly affect the public, it doesn't really matter. But <laughs> I think he was kind of an asshole. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I don't. I, I always think of that though, though. People with like, when it comes to like infidelity, it's like, I don't have the, the time for that. I. <sighs> I may be the worst person to date ever because if you are an inconvenience to me in any way, shape, or form, I lose interest in you. Wow. So, like, <laughs> like I'm serious. So, I just, like, I'm like, nope, if I have to go somewhere, if it inconveniences, like, my routine, I'm not interested. So, the idea of having seven people to <laughs> deal with, that's just, I, polyamory would never work for me. Oh, my <laughs> God. I, also, if you ever meet those people, like the, like 40% of their life is just about like talking to all of the people they're sleeping with to yeah. make sure that everybody is like emotionally okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm just right? like, that sounds like a nightmare. I can't. I, that's <laughs> no, so much you. work. I mean, like more power to anyone, you know, who, who does what they need to for their own relationships. But like for me, it would just never but the, work. Yeah. But this sounds like it was a secret thing. If you're like openly in that, then you can just when you, you can just like kind of recede and let the others deal that's with each true. other. You know, yeah. you need some your alone you, time. Yeah. If it's a but if it's like a secret, that's that's more. Well, that's work. a whole thing. That's yeah. such an inconvenience. <sighs> how do you how do you live a normal life? I, I after these, I need to like hide for a few days because too many people. <laughs> <laughs> we get three conversations that's out it. of you, and then you. That's it. Then I have no more. I have no more people. That's not no, true. I understand. I, I feel the same way. I'm just like let let what is manageable be simple, or like uh, my personal life be simple, and let you know. Yeah. The chaos of working in this industry be the chaos in my life. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Scream Dreams, the nightmares that shaped us, where we talk to your favorite filmmakers and creatives about their nightmares and the things that really terrify them. I'm Catherine Corcoran. I'm James Agenies, and today we are joined by Fiona Dorf, who I just, I I love your work so much. It's, <laughs> oh, thank it's you. It's so good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I, I personally like have a really hard time watching my work, but I like that other people watch it. I feel like that's <laughs> most people though, right? Yeah, I think most so. Most people don't like so. yeah, watching yeah. themselves, especially when it's like an acting thing. Like I, I can watch myself host stuff and it's fine, but when I'm watching myself act, I'm like, Oh, that's just me, and people will be like, "No, you're you're really good." Yeah. I don't, even, and I'm like, "No, it's just I'm me like, doing oh, this thing." God, it's weird that my eyebrows move like that. I, who yeah. Oh my god, I'm just like that. I do this thing when I fake cry, where one <laughs> eye always closes first before the other <laughs> drives me nuts. Like I have a twitch or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like because it's yeah. not real, my body like refuses to accept it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you just see all these shortcuts that you know you're faking, but other people buy into. So, yeah, you know. there's nobody in the world that's ever noticed that one eye closes first. <laughs> I my, promise, besides you. On a, no, my sister has looked at my uh, uh, an audition tape. She goes, what the hell is going on with your eye? Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so my sister has a Sisters. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I have one like that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll call you no. out. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, but is that, like, is it is it because you're, like, you, like, have, like, we talk a lot about fears on the show, like imposter syndrome. Does it feel like, are you afraid to watch it? I mean, I mean, I, I guess I has to, I'm sure you get this all the time, but it has to be so hard 
to, and so much pressure to come into a, a franchise <laughs> that is not only an established and notable franchise, but one that your father, yeah. your has, Oscar nominated it, father. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah, what yeah, is yeah. that? What is that pressure like? Yeah, I mean, that pressure was most was loudest when I got cast in Curse of Chucky. Yeah, um, I, you know, people sort of assume that I don't audition, and and uh, that was that wasn't the case. But yeah. what's also true is that you know it's. I had access that other people don't have who don't who weren't like raised in the industry. So uh-huh. I've been around film sets since I can remember. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when I when I was first cast, I mean, I have really bad imposter syndrome and so does my father. <laughs> oh, interesting. which is really interesting. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I think that it's a has to do with pers- like, per genetic personality uh-huh. in some ways. We have these like different dispositions that we're born with. We don't know why. Um, so I have it. I have it. I have it very intensely. Actually, <laughs> it's never gone away. So every once in a while, I can watch when I I've been cast in sort of larger like monster characters where I look really different, and that I can see. I can see sort of why they cast me sometimes but otherwise um I think it's just how I was born and it's how my father is wired also huh. you can so. see when they cast you as monsters you identify with the monster yeah I think my edge is um I have always been a little like how do I explain this but it's I've always like I was always kind of like a little a dark kid uh-huh. and pretty extreme and so I have been able to relate to like feral characters in a way that I think cool. there's actresses out there that do, and not, but maybe fewer. Like casting me as an ingenue is the most embarrassing thing in the world. <laughs> They've like done it before, and I was like, everybody's uncomfortable. It's just, like, <laughs> felt like I was lying. Um, what do you say? You were like an extreme kid in in what ways? Ooh, like, were you, like um, fucking skateboarding around. <laughs> <laughs> See it. No, I don't know. See it. Um, I just, I don't know. I just came from kind of an eccentric family, right? Like my dad is an actor, and my mother was a professional psychic. Um, oh, okay. And you know, they were like, yeah. <laughs> um, she was what they call a remote viewer, um, and you know, we were like searching for aliens and everybody kind of moved to, my dad, this was after she left my dad, but everyone like moved to a cave to prepare for the end of the world and like. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. You just very casually said that you and your family moved to a I cave. I didn't. So my mother, okay. my mother and the people who she were sort of. Did you ever visit did. her in the cave? Yeah, it was. A, well, yes, <laughs> <laughs> it was. So it was a place of land that had a um, a lava tube. It was in Hawaii under it. And it was according to the, sort of their belief system. It was where um, aliens were going to. There was a whole system of beliefs. But anyway, so I come, but but also, by the way, like it sounds kind of wild, but there's like, uh, everybody has their kind of family stuff. Sure. Right? Yeah. 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 And and so I felt like, I sort of felt like I came from this like weird and hard to describe childhood. And I was like, maybe my edge is like, I can bring some kind of relationship to that, to the screen. So that's yeah. like, also kind of has to do with my um, relationship with acting. I'm like, yeah, anyway. How early did anyway. you how early did you know that you wanted to act since like your dad would have been yeah. acting your entire life? When I was a kid, I, uh, I begged my dad to take me to Lee Strasberg acting school That's and where I was I went. Did you? Yeah, in New York. <laughs> yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a uh, were you like I am an element. I am fire. Oh, yeah. I think like I, I the thing that's so funny about uh, about Lee Strasberg that I like I I I did too. So I did Lee Strasberg and then my the other thing that really clicked for me, you know, we all try everything. So we've done like, you know, like Meisner and all of that stuff too. But like the thing that really clicked with me was like Suzuki, which is like, and viewpoints, which is like the opposite of that. It's all very like body and to the cerebral. Yeah. But yeah, like the, I remember coming back from Lee Strasberg and I was my first Lee, Lee Strasberg stuff and I was still in high school and my acting teacher being like, I know you think you're having an experience right now and you're like on one because you were at Lee Strasberg, but I'm not seeing shit. <laughs> so I like, it was like, like yeah. a really, really good note. But like, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Anyway, I, I've had that happen where I feel like I'm 
I, I have this whole thing going on, but it's too subtle. Yeah. It's like, too internal yeah. for, to register on like, camera. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Fiona, I'm so glad you're feeling so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we see some of it, please? <laughs> well, that's a yeah. thing with Strasbourg that's like, and it's always this like mis- misconception. Everyone like, like people who don't know, like talk about like the method and they're like, oh, method acting. It's like, that's not what, that's not what it is. It's a very, the, the perception of method acting that's like. Well, in, everyone thinks of like the Daniel pop- Day-Lewis not moving in or, my or, left foot. Or like, um, yeah. or like, like Heath Ledger, like living in a house with addicts to play a drug addict, and like he's like, no, that's not like yeah. not sleeping for days or whatever. That's not what it is. But it is very cerebral, so it's very easy. I find to like get in my own head. Oh and yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I well, I I feel like with acting, what's interesting about it to me still is it feels like this enigma, and it yeah. feels like also something that I'm not totally certain you can teach. Uh, it's like. Um, my dad always said when we talked about acting, he's like, just step over the line, kid. And I'm like, that doesn't fucking mean anything. <laughs> what are you talking about? But you end up, right? These acting teachers yeah. talk in this way of like, it's basically like, do it. Yeah. Do it, do it, do it, do yeah. it. But don't think about it because then you're not doing it. But you have to think about it in order to be able to do it. So it's there's just so many. We used to have this joke because we had like, they, they take you three at the at, 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 Lee Strasberg for people who like don't know it's like any acting school like you have your 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 scene study and then you have your like your work and then like they have movement classes and things like mm-hmm. that and we had this one movement teacher who would always tell us like move across the floor like we were like like uh, an animal but then it would become like fire or like something like really obscure like as like a skyscraper or whatever and like we had this joke like be the pound cake <laughs> just be <laughs> the pound cake you know <laughs> You know what I mean? You're like, great, I'll be the fucking pound cake. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's really fun. <laughs> Every once in a while, yeah. as like as an adult, I went to um I went to a Meisner um, William Esper in New York oh. City as in my twenties, and I remember like walking into a studio and everybody was like between twenty and thirty, and we were all like on the everyone was on the ground, kind of like gesticulate like gyrating I was like <laughs> we are like all grown adults paying money for yeah. this. <laughs> but it did it um yeah I don't know I uh I I think if anything it gave me confidence to like try mm-hmm. yeah and so and it's a fun thing to do if you know if you can do it what's the method where you just repeat what the other person says Meisner. Meisner. Yeah. yeah I I took Meisner for like a few months I I really tried to give it a chance but wasn't for me. <laughs> I did I really didn't like that one. I think everybody had like how you how you tap into whatever it is that you're exploring is 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 different because every like you said every single person is different. Right. We all have our own like ways that we approach life. So like what works for you? Some people love Meisner. That works really well for them. Some people hate it. Some people love viewpoints. Some people it looks really weird. You're just running around in circles for like hours before you learn the lines. Like it's just like it doesn't make sense. It works yeah. for me. Like yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's just kind of like everybody is different, but it is bizarre. Like for if you if if you've never taken an acting class, you should just for like the hilarity. Just to do it. Oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And for the like the humility that you get. Oh from my it. god. Oh yeah, it really <laughs> takes you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Really yeah, makes you sure. just uh, yeah expose yourself to people. We're, we're pe- go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say I have a um I have a friend who is trying to get me to go to this. Uh, I mean, how do they describe it? The Garden Labs like hippie community oh. in the north of Portugal for like a week or something. And I looked at this website and I was like, I've never hated any copy more in my entire <laughs> life it was like come like scientists and gentle fish and like um and be discover art like who are you you are a warrior i don't know whatever it just sounded so fucking stupid to me and he challenged me he was like you know like it's more work to not be cynical and to uh, you test yourself yeah, and so it. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. Oh yeah. Through or not, <laughs> oh but you have like, to decide it. I might, I might you have it. to if you do it you have to come back and like give us a rundown of yeah. like what happened and what, like I hate hippies. It turns <laughs> out I fucking hate them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Sorry. Love you all. <laughs> did you were did you find in in acting classes that that teachers were tougher on you cuz you know like acting teachers have their own set of like ego. Did you find that they were tougher on you because of who because your dad Because of my was? dad? Yeah. No, yeah. quite the opposite. Oh, oh really? Interesting. Yeah. You, you found some privilege yeah. maybe? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was the one, you know, who had 
like kind of more experience and had been around it and whatever. So yeah, yeah um, I wouldn't say I was the favorite. I also did this thing. Uh, I went to acting conservatory when I was 25, and oh god, my <laughs> personal note, my mother had just gotten really sick, mm-hmm. and um, I like everybody had joined this kind of cohesive group, and I just wasn't in it. I just like like I wasn't the kid who was like theater, theater school. This is where I feel yeah. alive. Like that was that's not my journey, yeah. and it's never been my story. Um, there is something with acting though that. I guess when you step over the line, whatever the fuck that means, uh, it can be like the most exhilarating and alive I can feel. But I don't know if the culture around it is something that I've always loved. Like I, I felt very much like the black sheep. Totally. Um, I feel that so hard. You do. Yeah. Maybe we all just feel like black sheep. Maybe, Maybe that's like the human I, I condition. Don't know. I think the theater kids are are feel very comfortable within them. Really? The, the within their group. Yeah. Yeah. group. Yeah, I, do, I envy it. I feel like I mean, I maybe it was similar for for you. For me. I, I enjoyed like conservatory. I didn't enjoy. I went to I went to college for acting too, which is stupid in my <laughs> opinion. I mean, I, look, do what you want to do, but like, major in anything else because, at, in my opinion, being an actor is like being an athlete. You have to you have to be working at it your entire life, yeah. and you have to be like practicing and getting better and finding different ways in depending on where you are in your life. And like, you're always going to be taking class, so don't spend that kind of money on those classes in college unless it's like an incredible unless it's like Juilliard Mm -hmm. you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like major in psychology or like something that's gonna like supplement it that's my like two cents but like I did and I just felt I was working so I was already represented I was already working and like so much of like what I was trying to learn was to like make me employable and I just felt like that wasn't hitting with the you know, and 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 I felt like they kind of. I actually lost my my scholarship oh, wow. because I had a film at the Cannes Film Festival. Yeah, oh. <laughs> like why did that make you loser? Because you in a, in a conservatory program, you're not supposed to be working. Yes. So uh, and I was dreams, like, I'm going to Cannes yeah. you're going later. To can, you're going you know? to Cannes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, maybe that is a fear <laughs> though that we all just feel like we don't fit in because of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that that goes like across industries, right? Um, yeah. I also I I do some conventions, uh-huh. and yeah. I, it's really fun meeting the people who identify with horror and Chucky. Like, yeah. and I I try to like talk to them for um, at least like four minutes or something, and uh, I think that's the one constant is it. It feels like they were people. It's like a genre that attracts black sheep and yeah, yeah. it's the their outsider. theater school yeah, exactly. yeah. we are you the know? island of misfit toys like in yeah. the in the cinema world you know in a really cool way yeah, yeah. it's it's fun it's fun to to meet them i've yeah, always it, felt that way it's nice being a beacon for people who feel otherwise lost and left out yeah yeah yeah, and, and, and like but, killing dolls, just murder yeah. and mayhem. Yeah, especially because I, I just did a convention, just got back from it, and uh, it was in Ohio, like Cincinnati, uh, and so many people from like West Virginia and Indiana and uh, just coming over there and talking about how they're from these small towns where no one they know is interested in the same things as them and they feel so alone but then they're able to go online and, and see the community yeah. of horror people yeah, online and go to these conventions and like they feel – connections to people and it's just really nice to, to hear yeah. them talk about it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys do that you and your wife uh on your on your channel but on your shows i think you, you always end them with be good people and it's just like this whole like i love that you guys do that this like this warmth of like just just be good to each other be good mm-hmm. to each other like be excellent to each other <laughs> yeah. all yeah. Day, you know it really yeah. is yeah i feel like get good habits as much as you can yeah, yeah. i mean that's what i try to learn for myself like that's the content of your life right <laughs> Do you hear aliens? Oh, oh my God! That yeah, that thing. you yeah. have the experience. Oh my gosh, an alien is coming this time. No, no, it, it feels nicer than an alien. Well, our alien feels good. I don't know if aliens are mean. Do you guys know? I, that's actually my biggest fear. Is I hate aliens. Oh no, I really don't like them. Oh no. Well, they'd be so much more advanced than us if, uh, yeah. if they were to contact yeah. us. Yeah, 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 and they're definitely out there. So. Yeah, um, also, also much more advanced than us. Is Barbara Crampton? Crampton. That's true. Who I think is it's set right. to arrive. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh my God! Oh, nice to see nice you. Nice to see you too. You're oh my God. 
not an alien. There's all these awkward <laughs> hugs that I have <laughs> over the over the chair. But um, now I want a super cut of your hugs. Uh, yeah, see, like, who handles it the best? And who, I yeah. Well, I have to give the guests the downstage. Oh, oh really. thank you. Yeah. I oh. didn't take yeah. my light. You're right. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so I was over there listening to the whole thing, and um, well, no, I mean I appeared from my bedroom, from magical place, um, <laughs> from beyond, as I as yeah, I like from to the, say. Uh, whole, done, done. <laughs> so, from beyond. Um, that was like not a drum at all. Yeah. Oh, those noises. <laughs> Wait, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she did. Today, today, sorry, I did full duck sound. It's been a long <laughs> day. <laughs> but um, you guys were talking about acting, and of course, that's something that really interests me. So when you were talking about it, because we don't always get to talk about that. Yeah. Um, I am used to watching myself. I I'm okay with watching myself, because I did a lot of soap opera work in mm. my early life, yeah. and so I watched myself all the freaking time, mm -hmm. and so now it doesn't bother me to watch myself at all. Because I've seen myself so much, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't have an issue with that. But when you were talking about imposter syndrome, yeah. which I have to tell you, you're an amazing actress. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you were channeling your father, channeling you, channeling your father, <laughs> I flipped out. <laughs> I fucking flipped out. You were so good. Thank you. So I don't know if you felt like after you did this, even though maybe leading up to it, you felt imposter syndrome, you feel like that mm -hmm. like the day before or whatever. Did you feel like after you shot some of those scenes, did you feel better about yourself or did you have to wait till people told you or till you saw it yourself? Or when did you go, you know what, I, that was pretty good. Or did you ever? <laughs> I never did. No. <laughs> you never did? Oh like you're God. so good. You're so good. Thank really? you very much. You yeah, yeah, so yeah. Talented. I have I have a really funny relationship with this franchise where um, it uh, I feel first of all it is so fun to make right. Yeah. So I'm anxious, but like it is it's yeah. a group of people that have been making stuff together for now. I mean, my first movie was like 12 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I love Don Mancini. Mm -hmm. I love him. Mm -hmm. Like really. I think he was there when I found out my mom died. He's like, just like this massive uh, figure in my life. Um, and it's really fun to make. But I, but I have a hard time. Um, I have a hard time having a relationship with people uh, with like, liking it. It feels like something that I do in a vacuum. And then I go out and meet people. <laughs> <laughs> really like it but I don't really have any kind of emotional connection to that it feels like this fun thing that I get to do that's both scary and um really fun with my friends and my I feel like this my answer is all over the place but uh well, do you ever feel do you ever satisfied do you, with the work no, satisfied no. it, it was no. the word I was gonna I was gonna say but do you ever is there is there any indication at all that you feel like you have done good work ever have you had that experience ever? I mean, this is fucked up, but not, re but not really. No. Yeah, not really. I mean, so I, it continues I, I get... on. It's before you make it. It's after you make it, and it just continues, continues on. Do you ever read yeah. reviews, or do you avoid them? Sometimes I read reviews. Yeah, okay. I also like you know I get things offered to me once in a while, or yeah. I get cast and stuff yeah. over and over. So you think like at this point I would have some better kind of relationship with this, but no, I um. I am pretty constantly dissatisfied. And you know what? My dad is the same way. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. That's what you said. That your wild? dad feels like that. And your dad is like... Yeah, my dad is like ridiculous. some of the best. Dude, yeah. I'm just, yeah. I, I've just been watching and rewatching Exorcist 3 and just like, holy shit. I, that might be my favorite performance yeah. from yeah, him. Yeah. Just... yeah, He, you know, like stuff he's done a, a, a long, long time ago, he like doesn't see himself in he's like that that was pretty good yeah but but hmm. he doesn't he sees what's wrong he sees what's of wrong course. i mean we all look at i myself included i'm okay watching myself and i and i can watch myself sometimes and go okay i like that moment or i like that you know that that scene or you know i never i probably don't love like a whole scene all the way through because i always look for things that i go if I had that to do over again, mm -hmm. now I know how to do it. I would have done this or I would have had that emotion or 
you know, I would have taken that pause or, you know, they might have had a different, you know, attack on it. But this brings me to something that when, when you guys were talking, I was reminded of that Sir Anthony Hopkins says about acting and his process. And, you know, I'm mm -hmm. so interested in that. I'm always looking yeah. up what famous people, you know, who have it all <laughs> Talk are about saying. Acting for sure. Talk yeah, about yeah. acting. So he said recently, and I think I saw this on Instagram or something, <laughs> he said, it's really none of my business what my character does. I mean, it's not any of my business. I read the words. I, you know, know what my character is doing and what they're going to be saying. But I, like your dad said, step over the threshold, right? Is that, was that the Step quote? over the line, kid. Step over the line, kid. <laughs> so it reminded me, Sir Anthony Hopkins said that, step over the line. And whatever it is, it is in that moment. And it's none of my business. And I don't know if that so maybe is the helpful. Line, the line is like the doubt of like, oh, I'm overthinking this or I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe the line is just. Well, I, I'm i also a person who plans a lot. And I think we've talked yeah. about this before because my training is like, you know, see and study. Yeah. And so I really break things down and I really organize what I want to do and how I want it to come off. And then I try to let it go. Yeah. Like yeah. they say, let it go. But, um, I think it is when you're, when you are stepping over that line, you have, I think some of the best work that I feel I've done is when I'm not thinking about it yeah. and I just say it and I lit and I look at the other person and I see what they're giving me and mm -hmm. then I just answer them, you, lose you know? Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you guys what I do love about acting? Like, I, cause there's a lot that I really love. Yeah. yeah. But, but one thing is like when you figure like for me there's a long exercise in figuring out like what conditioning got me to the place where i would do and say all of these things yeah. like how that person like feels every day and how they yeah. got there like that has to be and that's really fun it feels like a puzzle yeah, yeah. um that's yeah. it that, I that, that that's I part of your process well that's like <laughs> that's like your backstory too yeah, like how, backstory. yeah yeah, yeah. like i write a plane yeah you know, you do you? Do I do too. I, I write a whole backstory, <laughs> and I don't have to show it to anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah it can just for you, I, or I can sometimes. Yeah. But you know, you know those moments where, and maybe this is also very inside baseball, but I do think it's interesting for people who don't know acting, when you, when you're so in it, and that when it's done, you feel like you have to like catch your breath for a second. Yeah. because you were so not connected in your body but simultaneously connected at the same time mm. i don't know how, how to explain it any any other way it's where kind it's kind of along for the ride yeah it's just there's this it doesn't yeah. happen every time and it, a lot of times it has to has you have to have like a scene partner too who like you're just in it with but like where you're just like you are not even thinking the, everything's just coming right. out and then you have a moment where they yell cut and you're like yeah. back in your body again yeah. I, I, I love that feeling yeah. whatever that is yeah. that moment where like i feel like that's the high i'm always chasing is that I had, moment where i'm right. not i'm not myself anymore i'm not connected to myself i had the best experience acting only just recently really it was on this little movie i did called teacher's pet that my friend luke barnett is in and he asked the people to cast me in it and so i just yeah. did this part and it was playing the mom of this girl who was my um my um what do you call that when you when you uh when you have a ward of the state and you're taking care of a foster daughter she yeah. was my foster daughter and there were some issues in in the family and with the way my husband was treating her and she had a serial killer after her so you know, she had a lot of problems <laughs> and uh the director said to me at one point he also wrote the script he goes i don't care what you say in this take i just want you to just do whatever you want to do and just don't even you know, because the other gal wasn't saying too much. Yeah. Just say whatever you want to say and do whatever you want to do. And I went. Because you're a oh. planner. Yeah. I didn't plan anything. And I just, and I, I just decided to just go for it. And something happened. Something happened in that moment. Yeah. And I had one of those moments. I've had them before. Yeah. But this was one of the stronger moments where I just felt like I was along for the ride and yeah. I did get out of my way and I was Sir Anthony Hopking it <laughs> the whole way through. I, my character like was flowing through me and yeah. at the end when they said cut, I was like, I mean, I wish I could do that every time, yeah. but I don't, I can't do that it, every it, time. Yeah, it's impossible, yeah. but you're always chasing that feeling. Yeah, yeah and right. And when you hit it, 
it's like it, there's no like other high in the world I feel like I think Jennifer yeah. Tilly once said to me um you know you're you're lucky when the magic is there and then the training is what you do when right the, when the magic I think that's what it is yeah. I think that's I think that's a very I thoughtful thing by Jennifer yeah I think that's true yeah. that's what it is but anyway now it's time for our game that we're gonna play <laughs> I thought that Fiona. was the game yeah that, oh, was, that wow. was the whole game ah, oh, yay. that's the end okay, of our great. show acting um <laughs> yeah the acting yeah <laughs> so um Catherine comes up with all our, our games that we play with the guests and this one is where I'm gonna start us off and it's going to be a dream because we are scream dreams okay. and I am the sidebar and so on the sidebar we just we're, we're, I'm going to come up with the premise of a dream got it and then we're all going to add to the dream and somehow you're gonna have to wake up and sure. how do you wake up from that dream okay. or maybe it's a nightmare yeah. it's probably a nightmare hey, hey man yeah nightmares. Do, you, the nightmares. do you have do you do you have nightmares? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I have nightmares. Do I have a reoccurring nightmare? You, you do? I do. Give me give me a couple bullet points of that recurring nightmare and I'll add that in. Uh, sludge. Sludge? Uh -huh. Okay, oh. give me get, get the uh, word some operative sludge. words. Sludge? It's the word um, sludge. Um, cliff. Ooh. Okay. Um, water. Mm. Okay, wow. Okay, so dark. <laughs> dark. Okay. <laughs> James, how much do you love Factor Meals? I love Factor Meals because I I don't have time, Catherine. Time is something that you don't have it. It just slips their way through my fingers every day, and I think about how how much time is leaving me, and I'm like, oh, but I have to eat to sustain myself, and I don't have time to make food. There's just too many minutes in the day. You're having an existential crisis. You're like, I, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do it all. And exactly. But I do have two minutes to make a factor meal. To put it in the microwave. It comes pre-made. It's delicious. It's healthy. It's it's specified to your dietary needs. That's We're right. Big and into I, fitness. I've and got like, them. Yeah. My, my trainer is like, hey, man, you got to stop eating all these all these high fat things. You got to eat better. And I'm like, like, eat the factor meal. Don't worry. I got factor. It's, and so it works out. So if you want to try Factor yourself, or if you're just too busy, or you forget to eat like I do, it's like a neurological thing. I feel hey, like I don't. You gotta feel, remember to eat. I know. I feel like I don't feel hunger. This is like a real thing. Oh yeah. I feel like I think I have a neurological imbalance where I don't feel hunger. Oh no. I don't know. It's like an, an evolutionary mechanism. But anyway, thanks to Factor meals. I don't have to worry about that, about right. accidentally killing myself <laughs> from starvation. I can just. I can just use Factor. And if you want to use Factor and support the show, you can go to factormeals.com slash screamdreams50 and use the code screamdreams50. Why is it 50? Because 50% off. That's right. 50% off to get, or no, it's not. That's a lie. Ha! Um, <laughs> wait, actually, yes, it is. 50% off your first box plus... 20% off your next box. So wow. that so it's like a double whammy. That's it's right. like Scream Dreams 50, you get 50 and then 20. What's that? That's that's 70 really when you that's, think about that's it. That's not math, but <laughs> 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 but that first one is half off. It is half off. Which so, is great. So if you want to support the show, head to factormeals.com slash screamdreams50 and use the code screamdreams50 to get 50% off your first box and then 20% off your next box. That's code... Scream Dreams 50. At... Scream Dreams 50. Factor.com. Factor.com slash Scream Dreams 50 to get 50% off your first box and 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Don't starve to death. Get Factor Meals. You know what's a nightmare? Dehydration. <sighs> yeah. You know what's an even worse nightmare? Plastic pollution. That's why we love Liquid Death and their evil mission to murder your thirst and kill plastic pollution. That's right. Their aluminum cans are as metal as they get. <laughs> so pick some up today because we all need something uh, refreshing to reach for when we wake up from a nightmare. It's true. Cheers. <laughs> So, okay, okay, so this is you. <laughs> Fiona is in a car and she's driving and it's kind of dark and her 
phone, your phone, your phone is out of juice mm. and you're kind of running out of gas and you're getting a little bit nervous and you're you're going to visit these high castles in at the top of, of this area in Lisbon <laughs> and go visit and and you um, you have to stop the car because the gas is no more but then also you realize that you can't walk mm. and you have that old handy wheelchair in the back of the car <laughs> so you whip that out you're actually pretty strong so you whip that out over your shoulder like through the car door i do crossfit <laughs> yeah you open it up you sit down and you're wheeling yourself down the road so that you can get to the castle you're on a high cliff and it starts raining and you're rolling your wheelchair along and along and the rain starts raining really heavily and the mud is starting to kind of creep up and it's like sludge mm. <laughs> and it becomes harder to wheel your wheelchair and then in the distance you see oh you're supposed to pass the skelly so oh god <laughs> sorry you could have interrupted me <laughs> if you want to, you're doing so well yeah we didn't want to and then you see past. And then you see, this is our skelly Sam. He helps us with our nightmares. <laughs> Not to be afraid. <laughs> oh. And then, yeah. Um, I think I see a large wave. Um, there was a tidal wave, an earthquake and fire that destroyed Lisbon in 1740, like completely mm. destroyed the city. Uh, so I think I see a large wave and I think it's like it, it's the receding tide, right? So it's receding and receding and there's like a shadow on in the back that's getting larger and larger and there's like fish and things and sardines. Um, who was just talking to me about sardines? I forget. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh that are flopping around and something is wrong. It feels very ominous and I'm stuck in the sludge in the wheelchair. And as the wave gets bigger and bigger, you start, you start to feel more and more trapped and there's nothing you can do because you know, it's going to crash down on you if you can't escape the wheel, if you can't escape the wave. So you flip the wheelchair to its side and hoist yourself out with your cr strong CrossFit arms. <laughs> and crawling on your elbows through the sledge, desperate to get away from the wave. And you hear it start to break as it comes down <laughs> slowly towards you. Oh God, I'm so sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but then the wave stops as though it hit an invisible barrier. And you look back over your shoulder and it's as though a wall of water that you're looking through a glass window at. And you don't know why it's stopped there until you hear a dull roar. And you see the fish that are flopping are no longer just flopping because they, they can't breathe, but you almost sense a fear in them, a fear that they know what's coming. And you see out of the wave come an enormous Cthulhu-like monster who parts the wave <laughs> as he comes out and he starts approaching you, grabbing a few fish on his way just to, to give him a little appetizer but the main meal that he's looking at is you. Well, this is, this is something I know about, the Cthulhu monster. That's right. Coming out of the water, and he's, he has eaten some of those fish, and then he's coming after you. And then with one of his tentacles, he picks you up from your wheelchair. And he, remember that castle that was in the distance? He actually picks you up and places you in this castle window because he wants you to be his Cthulhu queen. Oh. So it doesn't matter if you can walk or not and that you were in a wheelchair because now you are a being of the sea, a Cthulhu <laughs> queen sitting in this beautiful castle that's up over the ocean. And then 
We'll continue going, and anytime you want to wake up, you're allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. So I'm I'm in a castle, and I have this like dope boyfriend, and he's got all these tentacles, uh, and then I'm hanging out. And it's only like a few minutes, but I'm pretty content. And then suddenly I feel trapped again, <laughs> and there's this rumbling, and it's another earthquake, which is due, by the way, in Portugal. Uh, and and suddenly the the ground opens, and like me and all the happy Portuguese and expats who are like hanging out. Um, we all we all kind of crumble down into this ki kind of lovely oblivion <gasps> which isn't so bad after all and then i wake up oh yay, yay. <laughs> that was cthulhu oh you don't know <laughs> it's like know? a big lovecraftian yeah. monster yeah. like a big it's, a, it's, the, it's oh, okay, the yeah, yeah. you know what cthulhu is so it's the octopus like you've se probably seen it it's like it's an octopus monster. with like a little face sometimes yeah. he's got a little mustache oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's like yeah. from the depths of the, the sea yeah. Yeah. Depths of sea. Yeah. Though i don't eat octopus because they're so smart yeah yes yeah. i know no. do we, do i don't either you know what i don't eat octopus either i don't I can't eat octopus. I just feel I like that's awful karma. They're <laughs> so smart. Too smart. Yeah. Yeah. It's All like over, eating right? monkey. Yeah. 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 yeah no. no. Cthulhu no. means too much to me. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. We loved you. He was my boyfriend. Yeah, he's yes. your boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. That's anyway. the next merch item. It's a t-shirt that says Cthulhu is my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> With Barbara and you. Anyway. You know what? Tried. We should. Come on. Work. Yeah. I'm works in call progress. Fright Racks works, right now. Yeah, oh, works in progress. Yeah. 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 Works in progress. Yeah. Okay. This has been an awesome conversation, and I know you guys <laughs> are going to continue on. <laughs> and so, like Cthulhu, I will go back to the sea. Wow. See you later. Oh. oh okay. It's a little jarring. I'm sorry about That's that. That's okay. It's very exciting. Is she back there? Oh, no. Not so far. No. You okay. only see my purse. <laughs> She left that here for you. Good. Maybe <laughs> I should check my money. <laughs> <laughs> my purse is here, but the cash is gone. Well, Over cramped weird. in. Everybody says that about her. <laughs> <laughs> the advice I give now when people ask me, like, to be an actor, like my my niece, or it would be my second cousin, my cousin's kid, is um, thirteen and half Hawaiian, mm -hmm. and is this like really interesting face? You just want to look at her, mm -hmm. and she's like interested in acting. And I, the, you know, I've talked to them about it, and I was just like. I think my dad said no. I really wanted to be a child actor. And he was like, absolutely not. Uh -huh. Forbade me. And my mom was really mad at him. And I was really mad at him. Mm. Um, I don't. And my two cents as an adult is I think, first of all, it didn't, not being an actor didn't protect me from anything. Sure. <laughs> so, and I, and I think that it's more useful to like get more comfortable with the camera younger like i had wished that he had said yes i think and you still do like yeah. you still wish yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah i, I so. wish that my parents had let me i, I, I let really wanted to be anakin skywalker and phantom Menace, <laughs> which looking back maybe not since of everything jake went through but like yeah i was like the right age and like the right amount of adorableness and i was like i could fucking done that i feel like i kind of like <laughs> because my mom never really pushed for it like i did i did all those like nickelodeon disney auditions and stuff Stuff, but because she never really pushed for it I never really like we wouldn't if I if I booked something then it would mean like it wouldn't work with our family like whatever we had going on like I didn't do it if an yeah. audition like didn't work we wouldn't do it so it, it wasn't was, a priority yeah because yeah. it was just like okay like how do you know your kid is gonna do this you yeah. know what I mean it's like okay this is something that makes them happy it's a hobby and like She'll do it until she. I don't think I was very like. This is going to be my life, mom. How mm. dare you not take this seriously? Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. At, 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 when your child is ten, telling you that. You're yeah, like, but it is now, you know? right? Yeah. Like you can. Yeah, I also think sometimes you can you can tell a little bit, mm. right? Yeah. Um, in this way, that's kind of hard to talk about, but. Um, you know, it's a really it's a really lucky life as long as you don't mind no stability whatsoever yeah. and like I waited tables from what like 16 to 33 yeah. I mean like I'm a very good waitress uh but were, you know you were still waiting tables at like, 33 yeah yeah, wow, okay. 33, yeah. yeah. Wait waitressing or bartending yeah yeah was there um, like a project that like switched that was it Chucky that was like the I'm yeah well when one, one my mom passed when I was 33 which oh, uh God. she was like um it was a financial thing for me uh -huh. too um so that helped and then you know, I also, 
what happened? I when, You know, the year she passed, I started to work consistently. So I was cast in When We Rise, which is the um, – I always say Lars Brandt True, but that's not it. Oh my God, kill me. Oh my God, kill me. Oh my God, what's his name? Uh, Herzog? No. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to remember. Um, terrible Fiona. I'm going <laughs> to dust, dust, dust. Don would, would, is going to die of laughter if he ever hears this. Um, Lance Black. Dustin okay. Lance Black okay. miniseries on um, the uh, revolution in the 70s. Um, the Harvey Milk kind of movement in the uh-huh. 70s. And then also I was cast in Dirk Gently, which, yeah. um, so I got my first series regular and then Was that kind of like a breakthrough and, uh, thing? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I tested at that point 10 times and not and not been chosen. Uh, I was oh like God. the 10th. I was like, at some point, <laughs> this has got to happen. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, so yeah, I think it was like my 11th time I tested, I got a cast. And and how'd you end up in a Paul Thomas Anderson movie? Yeah, isn't yeah, that cool? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The that's so cool. He's he's a he's one of those filmmakers who is just always uh very interesting with his movies. Whether yeah. whether or not a particular film of his hits me in yeah. the right way, it's like I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I you know, it's just like the luck of access, right? So, I uh, I once in a while get to audition for these like kind of great art tour um filmmakers and he was one of them i also worked with christopher nolan oh which was amazing oh on yeah, what? yeah tenet oh wow. <laughs> i was a tenet. wait where were you in tenet because i just watched I that explained, pretty yeah yeah uh did you understand it no I'm <laughs> <laughs> um I explained. We, we came back from oppenheimer and we're like oppenheimer fucking rules let's go tenet and then we finished it we're like <laughs> oppenheimer fucking rules <laughs> Tenet was really, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it was like a spectacle. I think it helps like if you see it in a big screen, like I saw it on this gigantic thing. But yeah, um, yeah I so I, I come in halfway through the world and explain the story. And mm-hmm. I remember I had worked so hard to get the speech memorized. Uh, and then when we were finally shooting it, like it all kind of went into... <laughs> It was all everywhere in my head because it was it's a complicated concept, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and then at the the last quarter of the movie, um, I'm running around with what's his name. Uh, so I'm I'm doing all of these stuff. I'm like I'm all over it. I'm but I'm in a mask and whatever. Oh, okay. My friends could recognize me, but they were like, "Why don't you take your mask off?" It's like like I'm in control of everything. <laughs> yeah. Right. But also, by the way, all of that uh, that battle you see, I'm. I'm doing it. The red team is doing it backwards oh, in order. Yes. For, okay. Yeah. Like, and it's played opposite. So it's played like we're running forward, but in actuality, we're doing it backwards oh my so God. that the explosions would implode as opposed to. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, it was intense. And, oh, man. And cool. What is the pressure like? I mean, we talked we talked a little bit before you came out about like you're into sleep hygiene, but like, what is the pressure <laughs> like going in? to to work with these big directors like this like do you do you get anxious do you have anxiety dreams do you like do you have a process that is related to your sleep before you go in uh can i be totally honest yeah uh i have really bad imposter syndrome so it's just like this it, it's this like oh i know how to audition but i don't know how to like do it on the camera i, I just like it's a tunnel of self-doubt and then um i usually can't sleep the night before mm. um the night before my first day, I usually can't sleep. Uh, and then it gets better. Like, um, yeah. you know, on a TV show, it gets much better because you're just... The, you get in a rhythm. The, yeah, you're in the rhythm of, of coming in. But, um, yeah, I'm into, I'm into sleep hygiene in general just because I think it's tied to how much anxiety you walk around with um, in your day-to-day yeah. life. So like, what kind of hygienic practices... Do you do? I mean, the main thing is I, I, I don't drink a lot of alcohol. Okay. Mm-hmm. That was like a big difference. I drink sometimes, but pretty rarely. Yeah, I noticed that with myself. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just like the biggest life hack. I mean, it's weird. <laughs> yeah. I have to like explain it to people. I'm yeah, like, like oh, I'm still fun. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm like, it's like I will drink, but I don't. I, I, I noticed that too because I have terrible sleep. I don't sleep. I, even before these, I never sleep the night before, before we do our tapings. Oh, wow. yeah. Never. Yeah. Any like production first days or like. I, I I just don't. The yeah. Same thing. Imposter syndrome. Full anxiety dreams. <laughs> like, and not drinking has like not that I, I I'm not sober. I will yeah, drink, but neither. it's like it, it's cut down my anxiety so so much. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 I'm usually one for like drinking and partying. I had uh, my first 
big web series was Drunk Disney, which was just like <laughs> taking shots and watching Disney movies. But this year so I mean, far. That sounds like a great concept. You know, it, was, it was pretty great. It was pretty good. You're not going to lie. That's fun. But uh, this year so far, I haven't had any alcohol. Just, yeah. Just as like a practice thing of like, oh, I wonder if I could, how long I could go without like having any drinks. Even though like we, uh, my wife and I had our anniversary in Vegas this year yeah. and like went to uh, a Vanderpump restaurant that she really wanted to go to. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I'll do like the mocktail or whatever. But it's, yeah, it. You feel, I don't know, it, it's a different feel at least. And uh, I'm still able to go to parties and, and socialize and, and have yeah. fun. So. The only the only corner that it's really hard is dating. Oh, <laughs> I'm just okay. like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to do this without alcohol. <laughs> it's just so hard to just like get away from me. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> that's the only I, thing that's I get helpful. it. We talk about like the inconvenience factor. I'm just like, I don't even know if I want to do this. I have just surrendered to the fact that I will be alone with lots of dogs. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, I just don't, I don't have the patience for human beings. I don't like the feelings of anxiety around dating. I'm it's just the like, hardest thing there is. Yeah. It's the hardest thing there is. Yeah, do, yeah. Do you have animals instead? No, so no I animals? just, no, I spend part of my time in, in Portugal, which mm -hmm. is like a very strange place to also not drink. Um, <laughs> you really oh, have to like explain honestly, it to people. I love Portuguese <laughs> Wine. Portugal I know. Has great, yeah. Portugal has great wines. I know. I know. I know. Vita Verde is great. Well, it's yes. also very cheap. Oh. And it's very low alcohol content. Sure. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> It'll still affect your sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the main thing, actually. If alcohol didn't, uh, you know, because it sedates you the first, yeah. I think it's, uh, this is me like trying to reiterate this book I read. Did anyone read How We Sleep? No, but I took Why we uh, sleep. A, a sleep. Um, si I, in my in college, my uh, other major was brain behavior and cognitive science. And one of the uh, classes I took was like sleep and how it affects your brain and the yeah. brain waves and everything. And yeah, yeah, yeah. alcohol changes yeah. the physical way that your brain acts during sleep. Yeah. And yeah. so alcohol sedates you with your mm -hmm. first um, cycle of sleep, like the first hour and a half. Oh. And then uh, when you wake up. Uh, which everybody does, but we usually don't remember it. You're usually, you know how you like wake up after a few hours yeah. when you, after you've drank, you're mm -hmm. like awake in the middle of the night. It's yeah. really annoying. And then you get, um, and then you get like kind of slow brainwave sleep, which is whatever. I don't even care the science. Like who, I, I don't know enough about it. <laughs> whatever to even, works for But it, I just yeah. know like how I feel mm -hmm. in terms of like walking around and, you know, competency and yeah all of the things that we care about i feel like i'm just like i'm not as focused i'm like sluggish even if i don't even if it's only like two drinks yeah you know and then i don't i'm really james and i are really into like fitness too i know that's like so <laughs> la to say yeah, like, we're sorry i really like being <laughs> into fitness <laughs> but it is like honestly it's changed so much of just like my my wellness and it's also for me like how I approach my work it's how I like when I'm writing when I'm acting like I'm physical and that's how I learn things yeah mm. so um but like I don't I'm not motivated if I've drank I'm like oh, I don't want to go yeah, to yeah, gym. yeah I don't want to sure. like yeah, 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 you know yeah. I need a whole day and then I'm off and then yeah. it's like yeah I think like 80 80 percent of our personality is biological in a way that doesn't feel intuitive but you know you like you get everything working well and suddenly how you how you feel and like the, the thoughts that pop into your head and all the stuff that like we take as personality just is like altered yeah. um i just think yeah I that's so we're, interesting we're so then how would that this is and maybe you've never even thought of this and it doesn't make a difference but um okay so if 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 85% of who we are is biological, that would naturally inform your character choices as an actor, right? When for something like Chucky, how, I mean, there's not been many, obviously your dad is the one playing the doll for the most part, but there have been times when like in this, when you are Chucky, how does that inform? Oh, or when you are playing your dad. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that happened. Or when you are times, playing your dad, way. playing you. As you yeah. Just, like the layers are so <laughs> fucking good to watch because every like you can see each layer yeah. in yeah. such a good way. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, we were really, I was really excited to shoot that scene. Yeah. And actually talk about intimidation. I was really intimidated because it was just so juicy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so I think your question is like, how does physicality or, you know, how I feel in my body and stuff affect my performance? And I would say like, yeah, I think I like try to walk around. I think you try to I try to feel what it would feel like to be in that person's body. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and I guess there is like some, God, it's really hard to talk about this kind of thing, <laughs> but I guess there is like some physical preparation that I do. Um, like, do you like walk around in front of a mirror and like kind of like. Never in front of a mirror. No, you no, don't. No. You're not the like last checking thing, your The last posture. thing I want to do is watch myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but you try to like to try to try to feel it. You mm-hmm. know, um, I've played a lot of characters that have been cast as a woman like the at the last second uh so it's oh, like written like, either horrible. gender neutral yeah. or really as cool. a man and then, yeah okay. um and so, and so i yeah i just try to walk around to feel what it would like what that type of entitlement sort of feels like in your body not that men are entitled but like uh, these particular no, characters no no <laughs> it's, everybody's no no it's a large swath of the population to generalize but yeah. uh it's uh the the particular characters that i've that i've played either have like a i i think of it as like as like something to fucking prove mm-hmm. Um, or like an anger and yeah. all of that in the end, like what is it? It's something that's physical. What else yeah. could yeah. it be? You know, it's the idea that manifests in your body, it becomes physical. Well, this is another like very inside baseball question, but like um, how, okay, so in taping then, now that we have to self tape all the time, Ugh. how does that affect you? Because I hate it. You hate it. I, Cause I'm the same way, I hate watching myself. Yeah. And then the fact that I have to watch back and choose what's the best, I'm not objective <laughs> at all. So it doesn't, it's terrible. I'm yeah. probably submitting arguably the worst tape. The worst ones, yeah. 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 Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I definitely I definitely book off tape. Um, yeah. And if there is, I, I can tell whether I'm going to be in the running for something immediately. My agent hates, hates it when I talk like this, but I can usually, t- I've very rarely been surprised. I've been surprised a couple of times, but uh, I can, if, if like my understanding of the world makes sense in whatever. Um, and uh, I, yeah, I think I can tell. I, I just say like, is, do, if I were not me, would that be a, would that be the character? Yeah, mm. yeah, that's a really good way to approach it. It's I, just like yeah. I heard actually for the f- the first time you you entered into the Chuck universe, you were not you did not audition for the lead, and that Don was like, no, you're the lead, and you didn't believe him. No, that's not what happened. Well, okay, almost sorry. what happened. Sorry. No, no, it's a part of it. Uh, so I they uh, for I first got an audition for the sister, uh-huh. and oh, I was like, oh, cool. And that was also a little bit more in my wheelhouse. And then he saw the tape, and he was like, have her audition for the lead. So then I put that on tape and then had two auditions past that. Okay. Um, yeah. That's what happened. But you knew you were in the running for it. You weren't like you. Knew I totally that, like, knew, and I had I I was so when I went in for the final test, which was like um you know the for the studio for the network and stuff, and Don was there. I had met him, but didn't have a relationship with him at that point. It felt like a oh nice to meet you thing. Um. Uh. Yeah. No, I thought I did a terrible job. No, that's the. <laughs> I thought I did a terrible job, and then uh when. When I got the part, I my first feeling was terror. I mean, at that point, I had done I had been in True Blood for a season, uh-huh. um, but like s- reoccurring guest star, like a small thing. Yeah. And then I think I think I had cast I've been cast in The Master. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Um, so I was like, "There's something here. I'm not a total fraud." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, I kind of get it. Yeah. yeah um, oh, and I had done I had done I had done a I had done a, a small movie. I'd been the lead in in a small movie. It was so scary. And what Don did is he let me watch the the main three, me, my audition, and then the other three. And at that point I was I I, I wasn't the best, I think, but I was the most believable in a wheelchair. That's the mm. only thing I can. And I and I. Oh yeah, because you had done yeah. another role where you. I done it. Yeah, that's right. I done. I had. I had actually been working for like five years or something. It had been. I would think I was twenty seven, twenty eight, yeah. or something. Um, but yeah, it. I had a. I. I just. I had that way about me where it looked like I had been through a lot, which yeah. I think. Um, everybody feels like they maybe have been through a lot, or their family's weird. But I felt like that always was my edge. It's like I, I had these extreme experiences in my um, teenage years with yeah aliens or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> and so I, I was like, oh, maybe this will give me, maybe whatever. Maybe I could be that. 
actress. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I mean, we're so glad you are. Oh, thank I you. I, I, I always say that Nika revitalized the series just as much as Tiffany did with Bride. Like, yeah. it, it, it's just like these injections that keep this series oh, going yeah. and is why it's still so popular, especially among kids, kids. man. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We see yeah. all these kids at conventions and it seems like uh, Pennywise is big with them, uh, maybe less so now than a p- past couple of years yeah. as we get further from those new movies. But uh, Scream, they really Scream. like. Scream. Oh ones. my God, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Chucky, like and those Chucky. are the ones that I see yeah, kids yeah. just like yeah. repping the yeah, hell out of and it's great. I know, the identification with Chucky is so interesting and I and I talk to them and it feels like one thing is constant. They're, I'm like, so how did you get into it? And they're like, you know, I used to like sit there with my mom or like my uncle or like my yeah. dad and we used to watch them. So it's like this family value. And, they, and they're always like, and I was scared of him. And now, like, then I, like, was able to, to be brave enough to watch him. And yeah. You, yeah. And it's now like I love him. Yeah. Or, or or sometimes they were never scared. They just think he's really funny. Yeah. But it's these, you know, people get tattooed. There's so many tattoos yeah. out there. And, um. Yeah, it's like an identif- I feel like it's identification with, bla- with being a black sheep a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, you you I'm, said I'm this thing all about it. Man. I think I once, love you guys. And may- <laughs> maybe maybe you didn't. So if I'm misquoting you, you, might, you could take credit for it or not. But it's unlocking something for me. What you're saying about like the the kids that are fans of this, the younger generation. Yeah. And you said once that Chucky is afraid of oblivion, and. That was like, I loved when you said that because I was just like, oh my God, like the idea of like what motivates these these mm. serial killers, like mm-hmm. what is their fear? Not like, cause they're creating this fear, but like, you know, again, and trauma begets more trauma. Like what motivates that? Perhaps, do you think that younger, younger generations like Chucky because he has that fear and they can relate to that in this like almost like arguably kind of post-apocalyptic post-pandemic <laughs> world that we're living in right yeah, now yeah 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 you know no, that's interesting actually who said that is my father your dad yeah oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's okay. how that's how he understands it okay is he says two things about chucky um he says chucky is terrified of oblivion and he loves his job <laughs> 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 um yeah, that's not how I. So I've been able to play that character a few times. So I've uh-huh. and I developed my own relationship with it. And you know, I, I mean, you probably know, like you have to figure out things that like activate you yeah. mm-hmm. that like will make that make it alive. Uh-huh. And so clearly, my dad's a little scared of oblivion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, for me, I'm not. I'm like that seems uh, peaceful. <laughs> Yeah, or just that word seems like it's a part of everything or yeah. something. That okay. that word like does nothing to me. No, I'm with your dad. Yeah, <laughs> are you? <laughs> hey, yeah. I'm with you. I, yeah, we talked about each other's fears on this. It's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that that isn't how I understand it. But but yeah, Chucky. So yeah, you is, have to find your own way. I had to, to find make my that own. Make yeah. sense for you playing the character. Yeah, I had to find my own. And my mine is more like being trapped. Oh, okay. That's what I'm scared you. of being trapped. Dating. No, I'm just kidding. Well, you are trapped in a way if you do. I get it. I understand. Well, speaking of that, so on this show, we always ask people, amidst all the things that you're scared of, amidst all the nightmares, what is your nightlight? What is the thing that at the end of the nightmare, at the end of the bad dream, when you're feeling trapped, lets you know that everything is going to be okay? Oh, God. <laughs> I have... um. I think that my answer is like a little too involved. I have one. An- I have an answer. Go for okay. it. Oh, God, it's okay. This Go for gonna, it. I'm, I'm scared so it's going to sound like didactic and obnoxious. Because a lot of people are just like my dog. So <laughs> like, I'm curious what this is. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, but it's more obnoxious than my dog. I should. I have a great cat. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So I. Uh. So my. So when my mother passed, I had to like figure out how to handle it. And I got really, I'm so, I got really into, I go in these like kind of painful long meditation retreats. I can't even say this out loud. And nobody wants to hear people talk about this, but I, I, uh, I started, I have a pretty dedicated, I'm so embarrassed, meditation practice Yeah. where it's like, it's not religious, it's not didactic, but it's trying to figure out what's kind of 
what 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 consciousness is like underneath all the thought and there's something that is very personal to each person but that i think is my i i spend a lot of my time um uh figuring out what that is for me I, it could be different for everybody but that's kind of my nightlight um and uh and I think it's made me kinder and happier and more grateful. The meditation practice itself? The practice itself, yes. Yeah, some yeah. relationship, to a changing a relationship with my own thought patterns. Yeah. And trying to like touch um, my understanding of what's under that. Yeah. Isn't that so? No. Okay, no and now so. enough of this. <laughs> no, not at all. And you're not, even today, you're not the first person to talk about like how a meditation practice grounds them and brings them back to center. You are yeah. not at all. You're not also, yeah, yeah. Consciousness is fucking weird, dude. Yeah. Consciousness is fucking weird. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Who knows? Like, we're, we're like a brain thinking about itself. It's fucking weird. <laughs> also, like, I, I kind of hate the like new age culture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, yeah, but really meditation. No. Meditation I, know, I totally really get that because I also have the same hangups with like, yeah, same. like my mom, I love her. Uh, she's very much into like, uh, chakras and stuff and I'm oh. like okay <laughs> so and like chakras. the crystals and stuff and yeah, I'm yeah. like I'm glad that makes you happy but I can't yeah. you know also I'll talk astrology all day I mean oh, yeah. okay. on a date with me if you mention it I'm out but like secretly oh. out I, okay. you know, yeah. wait, then, wait then what's your relationship with astrology because I feel like the astrology people are going to be the ones who bring it up on a date and yeah, like, uh, well, it's you're like, like I'm the only one allowed to be into it. In oh this no, 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 no! I have no relationship with astrology. Oh, but okay. it, but if uh, if it's if if my date brings it up, there's no there's no getting past it. That's uh, no, I yeah, I 100 agree with yeah. you. Yeah, that's for me too. It's it's like <laughs> if that's the first question you ask me is what my sign is. I'm like, well. We could have been really good friends. Yeah. But. No, I should oh, say no. I'm like a Scorpio. I don't care. So what's but your sign, James? No, I <laughs> James. What is your sign? The, the, that, what are you? You know, you know. That predetermines how you are, and then you know you and then whenever, no matter what you say, they'll be like, "Oh yeah, yep. that's such a Taurus thing to do," and I'm like. Oh man, I can't. I can't do it. I'm um, sorry. Yeah. Also, I'm like, I don't want to. Yeah. However, people want to understand the world. That's uh, true I, too, I like. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean. I just probably don't want to make out with you. <laughs> good to know. Well, good to know. <laughs> now that we've covered all of our bases. Oh, sorry, so, thank you. This was so fun. This was such a fun one today. Seriously, thank you so much for doing this with us. Uh, next for you, where can people watch you on this? Uh, yeah, this? I actually it's have back to TV. But yeah. Yeah, so so the child's play the the last half of our third season is premiering April tenth, mm -hmm. yes. and with the fourth uh, on May first, and it is so batshit crazy <laughs> and fun, and I'm really proud of it. I, I think that. Yeah, I just think that this season it's just gotten better each season, and yeah. Uh, and yeah, and then the the last episode specifically on uh, May first was like a big deal within the Dura family. Ooh. So just gonna drop that there. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, and I'm really proud of it. I hope people watch it. It's on USA and Sci Fi, and then also Peacock. And then I have two movies that are streaming on Peacock right now. Um, one is called Fire. I play, um, which is like a action disaster movie about uh, a wildfire. Um. Which with Peter Facinelli, who's like wonderful and I love. And then I have a movie that is premiering in theaters on April 8th called Unsinkable about the Titanic. Whoa, Ooh. like Molly Brown style? <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, shit. And, uh, and it's a period piece. I play a reporter. Nice. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm a cool. huge Jealous. Titanic I fan. Love that. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. Thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've, I've read we, a lot of books on it. Yeah, we yeah. have, uh, for, for my wife and I, our first wedding anniversary, we just sat in front of the TV. Uh, watched countless t Titanic documentaries and put together the 10,000 piece Titanic Lego set, which is now on display in our dining room. You nerd! Yeah. You total nerd! This is awesome. <laughs> have you talked to Don Mancini about that? No, no we Titanic? had it on and we didn't. We is don't he a have Titanic fan? He's interviews. a Titanic dork. Oh, oh yeah, yeah me time. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit. He's like a skyscraper dork and a Titanic dork. <laughs> a skyscraper, okay. Big time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you also are a Titanic dork, or if you just want to tell James what sign you think he's he is, let us know in the comments, like, and subscribe. Um, we're on all major podcast platforms. We're also on YouTube. If you can, Patreon is always really, really helpful. Please, please subscribe there. And also... Uh, ring the bell. Ring the bell. What's, what sign are you, Catherine? I'm a Gemini. Ah, uh, Gemini's always plugging their stuff. You know, it's such a Gemini thing to do, <laughs> telling people to subscribe. As if you even know... <laughs> But 
it totally is. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, until next time, thank you so much for being with us today, it was really Fiona. Fun. Yeah. Thank we you guys. Our scream dreams. I'm Kevin Corkin. I'm James A. Janice. Be sure to leave the light on. <laughs>